10 years ago, we lived through some of the most intense paranormal activity imaginable. That led us to research haunted locations. Oh my God, oh my supernatural God, oh my God. beings. What's on the wall over there? And all different over. types of paranormal activity. Oh! What we discovered, the South Coast is wickedly haunted. Hi, welcome to Wickedly Haunted, and here's what you can expect from tonight's episode. You're saying that you're a demon. Turn the light on if that's true. No. Be a baby. But if you... Oh, damn it. There it is. And if you pour out the demon and satisfy the afflicted soul, and your light will raise in darkness, more powerful leave now because you know what they're gonna do they're gonna send you back to that bottomless pit you came from or maybe you've never been maybe you just became demonic hi i'm todd this is marissa my lovely wife hi and special guest tonight brandon soto uh, if you know Brandon, uh, if you've watched our Relatively Paranormal videos on our YouTube channel, Relatively Paranormal, you know Brandon's from our group, our research group. Uh, Brandon's like part of the family. We've known Brandon for a long time. I worked with him many years ago. And just from talking at work, um, we got into different conversations about the paranormal, uh, ghost shows, stuff like that. I told him how Marissa and I were investigating graveyards and other freaky places, trying to figure out things about the afterlife. So Brandon's joining us tonight on the show. Um, Brandon, why don't you give everybody just a quick blurb about how you got interested in the paranormal? Uh, just growing out here in New Bedford, it was just a old historic town. Grew up on ghost stories from my family, from both sides of my family and friends and family. And then I got into all the different shows when they first started and, and then just fell in love with it and just been addicted since then. And, Glad to be going on haunts. I get to live it. <laughs> uh, the first time Brandon went out with us, we went to the actual real Conjuring House in Harrisville, <laughs> Rhode Island. And um, from what I saw, just like with Marissa and I, the bug bit him, mm -hmm. and he's been with us ever since. I mean, it can be, like you said, a very, very addictive <laughs> thing. Uh -huh. uh, now, on tonight's episode, we're going to get in-depth more into that demon house that we investigated a couple weeks ago. Um, if you've never paranormal investigated before, we end up with hours and hours and hours of audio and video that need to be gone through. It's very time consuming. And I know most of you have probably watched shows like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures where they get a couple of uh, electric voice phenomenons, a couple spirit box mm -hmm. words. Um, with the vortex that I've created for the group, it honestly is like a telephone for the dead. It's nonstop communication. Um, to the point where it takes me three hours to go through 15 minutes of video. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, my mm -hmm. son here, she watches me do it. Mm -hmm. It's a nonstop. Um, what we have as a research group and the style that we've created, it's nonstop activity, which is why when you watch our videos, it's much less us fooling around and joking around like the guys on Ghost Hunters and more us talking to ghosts, communicating, actual getting answers for the clients, okay? The first thing you wanna do when you get to a case is get answers for the people who have called you in, okay? And we actually get answers. We find out who's there, why they're there, you know, as long as they'll talk to us. Now this demon house, this was a little different, okay? Um, Marissa's heard a lot of the stuff. Brandon's actually seen some of it for the first time today. I showed him earlier. Um, very creepy, not so much answers, more threats. Um, really scary voices that we've never heard before, almost non-human voices. Um, a lot of activity in the background as far as spirit orbs and other crazy things going on. It was really like, you could feel it when you walked in the door in the pity of stomach. I'm not a very sensitive person. It almost made me sick when I walked in the place. It was so heavy and thick with, mm -hmm. with, I know if you've ever been to a place that's really negative, that's what it felt like to me times a thousand. Okay? Oh, I had a constant migraine. I mean, the second the second we even got into the car and left to go there, it came on. And when we walked into the house, it was just like, it was yeah. just the worst. But and it, it I, kept coming and going. Yes. It was strange. Mm -hmm. Brandon was uh, both very sensitive. 
Uh, they both told me right off the bat something's wrong with this house. Um, you know, just just really crazy stuff. Now, before we get back into the demon house, tomorrow night we have a very special live investigation from the haunted Edward Haskell house uh, in New Bedford. We've been dying to get into this place. Um, I actually used to go to a doctor's uh, office across the street. I used to show Marissa when she, you know when she would bring me there or whatever. And uh, it looks the part. Let's put it that way. And it's got a long, long, long history um, of both, uh, you know, overall history and overall haunted history. Mm -hmm. um, I was told by the owner that one of the cast members of Ghost Hunters actually used to have an office there and run ghost tours out of there. Um, you know, so that's how <laughs> the that's place exciting. is. So um, we're just gonna run a, a real quick clip here, show you some pictures of the house, uh, give you some quick history. Uh, and then we have a very special guest coming on uh, streaming with us, uh, who's gonna give us the lowdown because she actually worked there. So uh, let's roll that clip showing, you know, what this house looks like. And uh, we'll give some overall history uh, about the uh, Edward Haskell house. The Edward Haskell House, uh, built in 1869 by Edward Haskell and his wife, Louisa. Uh, they actually owned a very successful dry goods uh, store down in downtown New Bedford. Uh, in 1882, Mr. Haskell mysteriously committed suicide by gun. Unfortunately, we don't have a ton of history about that. I do have a, a feel around with the library looking for more info on that. Hopefully that will be in the video. And Louisa died in the house in 1914. Again, we're not sure how that happened. I don't believe it was by gun, but, and after that, the house left their family. Uh, and then you have another hundred years of God knows what else happened in this house. Uh, so right now we have a special guest that's gonna be joining us. This lady, Deb Golan, actually called us out of the blue, thankfully. Saw an article in the Standard Times about Relatively Paranormal and uh, gave us this tip about the place and the owner's name. And from there, you know, we called the owner and got in there and uh, Deb worked there for a long time and she's got some pretty crazy stories she told us. So uh, why don't we bring Deb in? And uh, hey Deb, how you doing? Hi, hi. How you doing tonight? It's okay, how are, you? how are you? Very good, very good. Now uh, Deb's actually gonna join us tomorrow, uh, at least for a little bit, as long as she wants to investigate the, uh, the place where she once worked. Deb, how long did you work there for? About six about years. Six years. About six years. When was that? What what year was that? At? Um, two thousand fifteen, I think. So it's not that long ago. No. That. And that uh, Amy from Ghost Hunters was there when you were there, correct? Yes, she was. Yeah. Um, and how long after you worked there did you notice paranormal activity happening around? Did you start experiencing things? When I walked into the building. <laughs> really? It was that you, crazy. You feel it. Yeah, and I was as I was moving in, lights were going on and off. I turned on one light in the main room, and it went out. And it's never turned on in the last six years. Um, <laughs> but then the intensity of lights are going up and down, and things are getting turned off and turned on. Um, and it was kind of playful. So I gently yeah. asked, could they leave the facts in the fridge alone? Because yeah. turning those off really bothered me over a weekend. So it was nothing um, that scared you. It was not stuff. in the beginning. So there were times when it when it did scare you, though. Oh yes. Okay. I, I was locking up one night late, and right behind me came a very clear, proper voice. Ladies do not belong out this late in the evening. Really. And wow. I I intelligently turned around and looked at nothing, and said, "What?" <laughs> I couldn't think of a better response. And then there was nothing there. She repeated herself and I left. It's, it's funny too because with, the, with these older places, people need to understand that the spirits that haunt these places lived in a different time period. So then when they see the way we dress, like you, you're going out a normal time for you. To them, that was improper for a lady back then. To I, them, I, that seems, you know, off, you know, off to them. I honestly believe that at one point it was a brothel and that was the madam. Really? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, she was telling you to get back to work? Or something? <laughs> like, is she confused? <laughs> <laughs> now, I think you told us that that spirit was a little malevolent though, correct? Yes, it was. Okay. And oh, one, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. 
one night when the ghost tour was going on, I try to kind of stay away from those people because I tend to get a little more input and anxious and it's not a good feeling. So I sat in an area under the staircase, nice, safe, no one can see me. And I heard the sound of a thousand birds and they were crying. And yeah. the, the impression I got was that Mr. Haskell shot himself in the aviary. Yeah. And birds loved him. They were very upset. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I never you know, heard the birds after that. You probably run into this too. If she was running constantly, who <laughs> was there? For a lot of people, paranormal investigation is, it's like going to an amusement park. It's a thrill ride to them. They want to go get scared and leave. And they don't understand that these people were human beings like you and I, you know, and if you just go in there and just start yelling at them and demanding them to do parlor tricks, think about how you would feel if that was you, you know, because they do carry a lot of that same mental uh, humanness about them into the spirit world when they're stuck here. I think they were upset about the ghost tours because I'm then sure. they'd find me and make noises and do all kinds of things around me. And it asked the ghost tour if they heard them, like, we didn't hear anything. Well, they probably wanted you to go out there and get rid of them. You know? <laughs> probably. You know, you are there every day. They're familiar with you, which is another thing we experience. We live in, in this haunted building right here. Um, as you know, we've talked to you about it. And the ghosts here are very familiar with us. And they give us answers about what it's like to be a ghost, about the afterlife as we've become more familiar with them. It's not like when you go to a haunted place, you've got a few hours just to make contact who are you? And then you're leaving here. We know who the spirits are and they talk to us like as if they were friends, you know, they get to know you. So I'm sure you experienced a lot of that there um, with them, with whoever's there, Mr. Haskell, Louisa, who do you think is there off, off the top of your head? Um, I believe the madam is there. I believe there's a female child there. Yeah. I did meet a stable boy who scared the daylights out of me. My favorite story about the place. <laughs> I was backing my car out of the parking lot and there was a, what looked like a stable boy behind me, but I thought he was real. Yeah. And then he vanished. And, and I'm he, panicking, thinking he's crawling under my car. He's going to carjack me, you know, whatever. And yes, I was very scared and took action. <laughs> he looked as solid as you and me type of apparition. He really did. That's crazy, huh? Did anybody else in the building that you worked with ever mention... Anything to you, like anything paranormal that they ever saw or? My clients, I would warn them because the lights were just so obvious. Yeah. Um, so they, they all saw that. Yeah. Um, and it was just kind of like, okay, yep, they're playing. Let, let's let them be. Yeah. But when somebody was very freaked out, you know, could you please calm down for an hour? And they would. Yeah. Well, that that's. Again, probably because you were there so often that they, they had a little bit of respect for you. You didn't mess with them, say nasty things to them. You know, you were something no. so respectful to them, you know, which is all, always something that, that you should do, especially if you got work and live in a haunted place, unless they're being nasty to you. Do you think they're going to remember you when we go there tomorrow? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm sure I, only, I only moved out a few months ago. Oh, you, you So it was pretty oh. recent when you left there. I left in December. Cool. Oh, cool. it's from 15 to, I see, to 21. Okay. Mm -hmm. So really recent. Have yeah. you watched any of our videos? Have you watched our videos? I yeah. haven't. My understanding is I need to be on Facebook to do this. <laughs> no, you can go on YouTube and just type in Relatively Paranormal. That's it. Just go YouTube, the search box, relative, or Google it, Google Relatively Paranormal. Uh, it'll come right up. You can see any of our videos. Because with this spirit box uh, that I've created for the group, you're in for a treat. You're going to talk to ghosts as if they were standing there when you and me know this isn't up. I'm talking like this is real voices coming out of a spirit box with no static as clear as day. And you're going to get to talk to the ghosts that flip the lights off and on to get your attention for many years. And maybe you'll be able to get some answers to questions that you wanted answered all these years. I mean, I have spoken to ghosts before, um, a long time ago, but which is very, very sweet. Yeah, well, you're in for a treat tomorrow. So and, and I'll, check out, <laughs> I'll check the videos out first. <laughs> Are you excited? We're excited. We're I'm very excited. We want to thank you so much for giving us the tip about the place 
And please, uh, you know, give us a couple other tips. If you think of anything else, let us know. Other than that, we will see you tomorrow, uh, 8 o'clock, right? Wonderful, o'clock. yes. I see you tomorrow. Thank, okay. Thank you for your time, Deb. Thank All you so right. much. All right. So tomorrow night, we're going to be running a live investigation from the extremely haunted, as you just heard, Edward Haskell House. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. I can't wait. I've been excited for two weeks. I know. This place <laughs> is totally awesome. Um, so we'll be live, streaming that live on this channel on New Bedford Guide. Uh, so watch out for that tomorrow night. Uh, but right now, we're going to get in-depth into that demon house that we investigated a couple weeks ago. And uh, we're going to run the first clip of that. Now, when we um, get to any haunted place, before we turn on the vortex spirit box, before we do anything, we want to make sure we're actually communicating with spirits. And the first thing we do is try to make contact. And we always do that uh, with a simple mag light, flashlight combination. And when they can do that, which every ghost we pretty much ever ran into does that, uh, to this day, it still impresses me. So what you're going to see is, is that quick beginning of our investigation and when we discover that it isn't human ghosts here that we're dealing with and they didn't die in this house. So let's roll that first clip and we'll check that out. In my hand are these flashlights, these blue sticks. If you twist them on and off like this, they will shut off and turn on, okay? If you can turn this on just by twisting the end of it, then we will know you're here. I'm going to put it right over here on this chair and just leave it be. If you can turn that light on, I'm going to give you another demonstration. Twist the end on. Turn it off. Just twist it a little bit. If you can turn these lights on, it would give us a sign of your presence. Then we can even ask you yes or no questions, okay? By you turning the light on for yes or not turning it on for no. Is that you turning the light on? If that's you. Can you go ahead and turn the lift it back off? Can you twist that light off? You just turned it on in my hand. There you go. What Thank the you hell? On, you know? <laughs> oh my god, there there you go. Can you shut the other I one off? Turn the wrong one off. Can you shut the other one off? Can you twist this one off too? Alright, but you know how to use that one. So if you can turn on the other light, excellent. Oh my god. Oh, no, good job. Oh God. I'll tell you what, can you shut them both off so I can ask you a question? Okay. If you lived in this house while you were alive, turn the light on. Did you live in this house? Okay. Did you follow one of, there we go, there we go. You follow one of the residents here? If that's true, shut the light back off if you follow somebody here. <laughs> oh my, oh my God. God. There's your answer to that, okay? What did it say on that? Okay, it says wagon. Oh, no. <laughs> go out of here. Did you have a station wagon? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I did. I mean, a little one. A little, an escort wagon years ago. Mm-hmm. Where, where did you say it was from? That's where, that's where the car was, huh? Okay, did you follow? Did shut the light off? I can ask you a question. Go ahead. Shut it off. Shut up, follow that she thought that sometime your father from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah, look. I just confirmed that again. Okay. Okay. The the house that you followed her from Pennsylvania. Did you die in that house? Turn the light on if you had died in the house. What? Says heavy. Okay. Mm-hmm. What are you want to take away? <laughs> okay. I think the energy in here is really heavy. Mm-hmm. You attach yourself to her because you like her? Hell. Turn on the light if you attach yourself because you felt connected to her. Oh. Ooh, so or, or, like, more of them right across your face. Mm-hmm. Very slow one. Very small one. Did I just oh. see you? Of course. I looked at the SLS at that time. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Okay. That was turn on the light if you're a human. Did you die in that house? Yeah. Oh, God. What's that mean? So, just, just to confirm, you never walk the earth. Okay, so 
I'm going to lay it up again for me. Are you saying that you're a demon? Turn the light on if that's true. So there you go. Um, as you can see, that's really like the first time any spirit in the many, many, many investigations we've done that straight out told me, I didn't die here. I followed this person across the country from Pennsylvania and I'm a demon. You can see I'm holding my arm out like this <laughs> um, and I don't even move because I'm actually stunned by that fact. <laughs> um, and I know what that means. Like we're laughing now, but like you are we weren't, you know, you know, we have fun with it, but when you know that there's a mm -hmm. demonic or, or something at least evil enough to call itself demonic, um, a lot of things come with that. They can attach to you. They, mm -hmm. the, a demonic entity exists for one reason and one reason only, and that's to kill you and take your soul, to wreak havoc on your life, to destroy everything around you, and then to attach the next person in your family and do it to them. Uh, they want to destroy your household, your job everything about you and this entity at this house had no intentions of letting go of this woman uh probably the only reason why it didn't attach to us is because it, it you know i'm gonna say this in the nicest way it had easy easy pickings there mm -hmm. you know um from our experience you know things were not that normal at that house and when you live like that and you don't live a positive uh in an atmosphere demons love that they feed off that they feed off anger negativity depression uh they don't want you to sleep because they want you tired and that's what they're doing there so when i heard that as you can see i'm stunned because now all these other things are racing through my head like oh my god i don't want it to follow us home how am i going to deal with this i've dealt with negative entities before do you bring enough sage <laughs> did i bring enough sage and holy water or is my faith strong enough to deal with this but we continued with the investigation um and what we're going to do is we're going to roll the next clip, which is when I brought out another piece of equipment called an EMF detector. And if an entity can make that go off, in our experience, there's really only one type of entity that can make that go off with any type of power. And what type of entity is that, Marissa? It's mine. Okay. And when that happens, Brandon, what usually happens with the EMF detector? I spikes. <laughs> yeah, it goes nuts. It goes nuts and won't shut off. Mm -hmm. And as you're going to watch here, not only does it do that, but it continues to manipulate the flashlights at the same time. Uh, which to us is very compelling. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like corroborating evidence. You know, somebody commits a crime, you get the fingerprint and the DNA slam dunk. Mm -hmm. We got two different type of things going off at once, communication wise. To um, us, compelling. Compelling, very <laughs> compelling. So let's run that next clip uh, showing the EMF detector uh, with the demon. If you have a lot of power, it'll go up and turn red and beep. You look the color red, right? Oh, there it goes, there it goes. Look. Show me how much power you have. How high can you make this go? So I think you can do a lot more than 1.0 if you're in human. Go ahead, fly to yourself. Make it say 6.6. .6. Come on, you can do that. If I make it beep again, that means you have a lot of energy if you can make it beep. That's like showing off. Go ahead. Can make it beep again? I got tons of energy for you. Go ahead. One more. You need to go one more. Well, almost. You almost got it. Make it beep? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Can you make it beep one more time for me? One more time. Make it beep one more time for me. I'll tell you what. There you, there you go. There you go. Excellent. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. So, if you're evil, turn the lights on. There you go. Excellent. Oh my God. We thought you were when you walked in. No offense. 
<laughs> we can feel your energy. I can feel, I usually feel nothing and I can feel your energy. I'm making me search my stomach. Let me ask you another question. Okay. Do you mean Robin any harm? We do. Wisdom? Okay. By, 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 see, look, this says 0.0, 0 right now, so... You're in the same spot, I got you. He hasn't moved, look, so... Look, and the temperature's gone down from 80 So far, it's been going off, oh, there. Can you do me a, a favor no. and grab the box again yeah. for me? No, he doesn't have it low enough. I can... Can you grab the down. box for me? No, I haven't got no orbs, nothing. One more time? I've been trying to, like, stay deep. Here, people, make the box beep. Turn up the numbers on this box right here. Make this peep if you're evil. Something. Make, work it, at make some the place numbers go up all the way to the peep again. I see I've touching it. Can you touch your arm? Can you grab it? Work, but then I've seen it work the green box, can you make uh, the numbers peep? The, the, the old cemetery. Yeah. And, uh, if you if you want to hear your own voice, make this turn right again and beep. I'm gonna put on a device for you to hear your voice, but I need you to grab so this again. If you see her over here, it's not her, but if you see something, if you see something in the middle, yeah. that's weird. Yeah. Just see how there's that gap. Go ahead, come on. Can you grab, grab the end right here? Yes, see, the see the arrows on the end here? I need you to grab both arrows. I need you to make it... Can you turn on the face of feet? I'll turn on the box to make it beat. Okay. <coughs> can you make this beat, please? Please make it go up again. I see you doing it. Make it turn red and, and beep. There, you're almost there. Come on, you're gonna make it go up. Uh, you made it go to 0.9. And you make it go up to, to 1.0. Uh, go ahead, and I'll turn up the box so you can hear yourself. Then yeah. you can say whatever you want. Go ahead. I see you turning it up, but can you make it go red one more time for me? Can you do it one more time for me, please? Seven, eight. There we go. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good. Good. <laughs> oh my God. And you can see when he's good. asking, it's doing it, but he can stand there holding right, it and so do it. Oh, hell no. What the hell? Is that your car? Yeah. Can you just make my car long go up? Yeah, my keys are on Crazy stuff right there. Mm -hmm. So, as you can see, when I, I took the phone out, so you can see what the meter actually does. 0, 0.0 was what the middle of that room was. I held it there for a little bit before I started asking it to manipulate it. And I was trying to use reverse psychology, you know, come on, show me your power. I was trying to get it to go up higher. We've seen it go up extraordinarily high. So 150 we saw once. I mean, that thing got up to like 1.1. 1. 1. Um, you know, we've seen it go off in a tree in the middle of a graveyard hitting nines, tens, foot. that's insane amount mm -hmm. of energy with no electricity around. Uh, like your microwave is probably like a 3.5 when it's on full blast if I stuck it right up to the microwave. So extremely, again, compelling when the flashlights are going off, it's answering questions both ways. And uh, I try to use as much psychology as possible. I did go to school for that. And I try to use that with the entities because it works. It works, especially with the demonic ones. The more you piss them off, what happens? The more you piss them off, what? Yeah, the more activity. The more yeah. the activity goes bonkers. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want to provoke them. Uh, they're bullies, is what they are. They're bullies. And what we also found here is that there were other spirits at the location that that finally came out at one point and said the demon controls us. Mm -hmm. So what the demonics will do is they will take control of the other spirits there and make them molest the residents and the other people and scare them so that the demons can feed off the energy and not have to use their energy to actually do the scaring. Um, so they, they do a lot of creepy things like that. Now, <clears throat> that part was pretty creepy, but then when we got into the basement, things just went absolutely, completely wild. Um, guys, what do you think when we got in the basement? Yeah, she refused to go down there. So. Yeah, the, the, so the owner wouldn't go down there. Yeah. Uh, the person with her wouldn't go down there. They turned on the lights and they jetted. They took <laughs> right <laughs> off. And if you think that, that the room was dark, it, it was a thousand times dark in the basement. I'm not talking about because we're underground and there's no light type of darkness. So let's run this basement clip. I actually call it the basement from hell. 
because when you hear what was being said and done down there, you're going to completely understand why. So let's run that clip, The Basement from Hell. Where's the light? Okay, where's the headphones? That's off. Come on. 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 Just a few yeah, right? Your headphones are the like no. Jesus! Oh. They just, just told me that I didn't do that. The fuck the thing? That was so weird. Yeah, it felt like box, somebody so. grabbed it though, Todd. So Honest to goodness. Is Maybe. that a Did you shut up? Did you just fling that phone? Weird. Oh, crap. Did you fling the phone? Leave you? Who's us? Together? Who's, who's us? X. Randy, you down? You see anything? We're down here. You wanted us to come down. Here we are. Oh, I just saw an orb. Are there any Are there any spirits here besides the demon? Who's down? Tell me who's down here. <laughs> What? What did it say? <laughs> oh, but they were, oh, it came right past us, Brandon. We hear this a lot, almost what sounds like spirits talking to each other back and forth. It's pretty crazy stuff. Jesus. Well, there it is. It's whizzing around. <laughs> Are you in the what corner? Is that? Are you hiding in the corner? <laughs> Show yourself! What? It's just... No! Oh. You're a good picture. Oh. Can you make that rocking chair in the corner rock? That would really scare me. That might make me leave. Bless. Bless. Get. Oh, hey, Brandon, an, an orb shot demon. An orb shot right up out of the rocking chair. Jesus. Make it rock! Could be the mom. They said the mom passed away here. Yeah. That rocking chair over there, make it rock! The mother passed away in the house? Yeah, the, the couch. No. She didn't tell you that? No. She told me. What? Todd. Let's see if we can get the name. We're both here. What's the woman's name who passed away here? It's just a saying. Do you hear what it said, Marissa? What? You didn't hear what it just said? It said Todd, Marissa, both. No, then it said the S word. S to the A to the T to the A to the N. <laughs> See, and it just said it again. Oh. 150. Is that your boss? Where'd you go? <laughs> don't run. You leave, don't run. <laughs> That's what the angry dude said at Cottage Street. We don't, we don't stop, yeah. run. Stop? This? Yes. Listen, I'm in the dark, standing here. Oh my god, what's that shadow I see? You could do anything you wanted. I found, yes, I found you. I can't see. Leave. Leave. I thought you wanted us down here. Demon now go back up. I said, now go back up. Now go back up. What? Go upstairs. You heard that? Yeah. I heard that. It said, I heard it. You heard that? Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. 
did say fuck it. You want us to go back upstairs now? <laughs> Is the demon down here? Momo, uh, as the spirit oil comes out of the box, goes past the dark pipes and out of the frame. Is that you? There's a pink thing. thing. What is that pink thing? At this, uh... Does this like oil come out of the desk and shoot across the screen? Okay, so first mm. off, we get a lot of questions about the orbs and the dust, okay? Um, two of the most incredible spirit orb, light and all, whatever you want to call them, are on that clip. That thing that shot out, stopped in its tracks, and turned and shot between me and Brandon. As it went by and Brandon, it was translucent. It was clearly self-lit. Dust does not shoot out at 100 miles an hour. Stop on a dime and then fly right directly at two people as we were getting threatened. It was saying it was going to kill us or something mm -hmm. at the time. And then the second one is the last clip you just saw in slow motion where that disc-like UFO type weird thing comes out of the desk and then flips end over end at 100 miles an hour off the screen. I've never seen anything like that. I saw that the other night and almost had a heart attack. I was screaming for him, so I come in the room. Never seen nothing like that. Never I showed sure Brandon when he got here. I'm baffled. I don't know how something projects itself like that. Dust is light, right? <laughs> yeah, no, dust, it wouldn't be able to do It floated that. up out of the desk, stopped, and then, ping, shot right off the screen. Explain it to me. Huh? So there was dust down there, but you can tell the difference in the complete video, which you'll mm -hmm. be able to see on our YouTube channel, Relatively Paranormal, uh, within the next day or so. Um, there's a lot of these weird light, anom light anomalies that are clearly not dust. We can tell the difference, the flashing ones, but those two are just out of control and incredible. The other thing that you get down there is spirits, demons talking to themselves. You can hear the demon ordering the spirits around. When I said, move the rocking chair, he wasn't telling me to go do it. He was telling another spirit, go do it. You can tell. And then the other spirits were talking to each other. One said, uh, he's right. And then another voice comes on and goes, is he? Is he? Yeah. <laughs> Those are spirits talking oh, to each other. That his voice or something like that. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Like they're talking about us, they'll listen to us talking about them and then interject themselves into the conversation in the background. Now, to be honest with you, about 60% of that, I don't hear till I go through the evidence review and I don't manipulate the audio. I don't mess with it in any way. Sometimes I have to slow it down because they talk so fast and because two or three of them will layer on top of each other and I have to distinguish what each one's saying. But then I play it for you in real time and give you that subtitle with all the voices that I heard going on. Um, it's pretty crazy when one's saying, get out of here, while another one's saying, kill him, and then another one's saying, Satan's in the basement, all laid on top of each other. That one part where they're saying, um, the answer you aim to, to get is here. Um, he's gonna chop you in half. So weird. Um, he's gonna kill you in your own bed and stuff. Like, that's crazy stuff. You don't. <laughs> it was like reading a poem. It was just a it was. It was like a poem. Mm -hmm. It really was like a poem. That's a good analogy. That's exactly what it was. And the voices that you hear, a lot of them don't even sound human. Yeah, I always said like a demon voice almost sounds like mechanic. That's the voice. That's like, yeah, that's mm -hmm. like. Um, it sounds like they're trying to mimic a human. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like it's crazy. Like a lot of those things, and human spirits, even the ones that try to pretend to be demonic to scare you. They don't say stuff like evil, devil, evil, Satan, he had demons, and like on and on and on and on and on trying to scare you. That's all just straight intimidation, and you can hear them intimidating the other spirits at the same time. I don't know if it was in that clip. There's another clip in the basement where they say demon controls us. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. has been our theory for a long time, mm -hmm. that when there's a demonic or a, a higher energy being there, it will always manipulate the other spirits in one way or another or bully them. They're bullies is what they are, which is why if you watch some of our videos and you hear us provoking, listen, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not, I don't like bullies. I haven't liked bullies since kindergarten and I don't like bullies now. When I get called to a case and people are crying to me, telling Marissa and Brandon and I, they're being tormented, they're being grabbed in bed, they're being torn out, their sheets are being ripped off them, all these things. 
and then I go in there and something starts telling me to get out. It's setting off my car alarm a hundred times in a row oh to make us God. leave. Okay, they that was crazy, right? So bad. They yeah. want us out of there because it, I told mm -hmm. it when we went there, I'm cleansing this house. Okay, we're going to cleanse it with sage, prayer, and holy water, and you're getting out of here, and you're going to end this. And I want answers now. And right off that, boom, it didn't even waste any time. It said, listen, I'm, I didn't live on earth. I never walked the earth as a human. Mm -hmm. I followed this lady from Pennsylvania. I'm a demon. I'm here to kill her. And if you don't get out of here, I'm going to kill you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to your house and kill you in your bed. Uh, it said weird, strange things like, I kissed your baby. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, really weird stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, I don't hear a lot of that in person because they talk so fast and everything. But when I hear that after, it's kind of freaky. I was freaked out the other night. I was sitting here by myself in the way. dark. Yeah. And I'm like, I got my <laughs> headphones on. I'm like, what? He just said he's gonna kill me in my bed. And another thing is, we'll, we'll never get a name. Like something, Leslie will never give us. Well, demons don't want to give you that, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it just says demon, devil, Satan, whatever. But you'll never hear a name. So in a true exorcism, if they come to exorcise the house, the, the the exorcist main goal is to find out the demonic's name, because then you have power over the demonic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when you start bringing up, um, you know, we we do have faith in this group. We do use it as a weapon, okay, because God is our protector. If not, we, you know, we would have attachments. We would have these things here. Um, but they react to it in a severe way. You saw it last week when I showed Brandon religiously provoking. You heard the weird audio uh, static on this clip. Not only did the audio static start happening, it only happened when the EMF detector was spiking. It went up to like 150 at yeah, one point. And then as soon as the EMF stopped spiking, the static stopped on the audio because that demon had so much energy that it was blowing up both devices. And Brandon stands there. When you see the video, he stands there forever and that Never thing moves. doesn't go off. Yeah. But it doesn't even go off for a long time till we start messing with it, provoking it, challenging it. Okay. Now, paranormal investigating, it's a very dangerous thing. If you're thinking about doing it, like I was talking about with that, it's not a game. It's not we're going to Six Flags and we're going to get thrills and all that. These things can kill you. They can follow you home. They can ruin your life. We take precautions. I really have researched this for 10 years. Okay. Marissa's been here doing it with me. Brandon's been researching it for a few years and I've instilled whatever I've known onto him. Okay. I've read tons of books about this. This is no joke. Okay. We didn't go into this prepared. Um, we started off slow with our investigating. We always tried to be respectful, but we stand up to these malevolent, nasty beings because what they're doing is pure evil. It says pure evil on the clip because that's what they are and you will feel it. So please, if you're gonna do this, do the research necessary to do it. Have the respect with the human spirits because they were human like you and I, okay? And they're just trying to get help. Imagine being stuck someplace, I say this all the time, and you're trying to communicate with people and they're ignoring you. Uh, that, that bang was this, they're just playing it off to the house settling how frustrating that would be and how lonely and agonizing that would be that you made the mistake of staying here. Whatever your reason was, hasn't been resolved or left. If you stayed here because like Angie here, our spirit here, stayed here for her children, but they were removed from the house an hour after she died, obviously. Her family Some came of them don't them. even know that they're dead yet. Mm -hmm. Well, then she stayed here for them and then they left. So now her reason for not going into the light is gone. And now she just stuck here mm -hmm. and she wants to go, but can't. Okay, so that's what you're dealing with. Okay, these are supernatural beings. And the older they are, like Mr. Haskell, been here since 1882, the more they know how to use their ghostly powers, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's like anything else. Uh, you start off playing the piano, it's hard. You play it for 140 years, you're going to be a pretty good pianist. He's been a ghost for 140 years, he's going to be a pretty good ghost. So, <laughs> no, true story. So definitely expect a lot of action tomorrow at the Haskell House because this guy's going to know what he's doing. He's expecting us to. Yeah, but he's <laughs> never had what we're about to give him to be able to communicate and manifest and whatever. So I expect a lot of big things from Mr. Haskell tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Now, the last clip is a very short clip. We're just going to give you a taste of what we do when we cleanse. Um, you know, it, it's, it's pretty repetitive when we go into a room. It's prayer. It's white sage. Mm -hmm. Um, I do challenge these entities, okay, um, because I am also trying to get evidence for our research while we're trying to help out the client, um, and I'm trying to learn, too, while we do these things. But you're going to get a quick taste of what we do when we cleanse. 
Uh, the only thing you're not going to see is me sealing doorways and windows with holy water, which is what I do last. But that's where all the uh, the last clip of the cleansing, and uh, you can get a quick taste of what that's like. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Amen. Only love and light may remain. I command you to leave in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You must leave these premises. Only love and light may remain here. You were never invited here. You were never asked here. I don't know where you came from, but go back. Don't make me come back with something more powerful. Leave now. Because <laughs> you know what they're going to do. They're going to send you back to that bottomless pit you came from. <laughs> or maybe you've never been. <laughs> that was my camera work. <laughs> you guys noticed? Yeah, you got to see my shoe tops there, my Jordans. <laughs> Sorry about that. It was the end of the night. I was, like, tired. But as you can see, <laughs> it's it's all negativity must leave. Only love and light may remain. We do pray. We say the Lord's Prayer as well. Um, I do challenge them because, again, they're bullies. And our goal is to force them out with the sage by starting at the bottom of the house, finishing at the top of the house. We leave one door open, and I push them towards that door, and then I seal them out with the holy water. We watched a show the other day where a guy was just using holy water without the sage, and what he's doing is sealing the entities into the house because without the sage to push them out of the house, if you just go seal the doorways with the windows, with the holy water, you're sealing the entities in the house. You're actually screwing the client. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, like, yeah. it's funny, but like, it's not funny for the people that are going to help. And these these guys get called in all the time to help people. I'm not going to name them, but, you know, Wait, to do. I seal this with yeah, he says, I seal it with the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ and, he, and he puts that cross on the doorway. <laughs> but without pushing them out the door, like the sage hurts them. We've asked, we asked the ghost here. Because I sage this house sometimes because they do draw on our energy and we don't like that. And we've had them say, just ask us to leave. The sage hurts. Please don't do it. Yeah. Um, you know, ghosts, I don't, I'm going to let me put it to you this way. I don't care who the ghost is, whether they were human. There's no such thing as a good ghost. Mm -hmm. There's not. Because indirectly, they're drawing on your energy. They're impressing their emotions and moods on you, which is misery because they're stuck here and they're not happy about it. And it's not good to, to live with a ghost. I've asked a few people, do you want me to cleanse the house? No, we just wanted validation. And they don't have me cleanse the house, and it's a mistake. As time goes on, this ghost is spirit. It can move, it can move further into a more negative. Well, even if they're trapped in a location, once they find a person comes in that they like, they're going to attach that person and draw most of the energy from that person like a battery. Mm -hmm. So, oh, well, it's an elderly lady who lived here and she never bothered me. Well, you don't realize it, but they've been sucking on your energy like a leech. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, you know, you should always cleanse the house and remove the entity, you know, because it's not a good thing to live with the ghost. They're not a good roommate. I don't care who, who you think they are. They're not a good roommate. We've been trying to move on Angie for a long time to help her out and to help us out. Our model, helping the living and the dead. We're not trying to hurt human spirits. If we can move them on, we will. Um, you know, if they're being nasty, then we're just going to put them out on the street. It's just the way it is. Um, but if we can help clear them, we'll do that too. But that's just a taste of what we do. So, and I'm glad you showed it because I get asked that all the time. Like you worry something's going to follow you, and I tell them what you do. But I'm glad. Well, see we now, we friends and family. we open the door and we close the door. Mm -hmm. I don't show it in, and it's in almost every video. I'll open the door. I don't show the closing of the door usually. But I'll tell them why mm. we're here. I announce myself to the spirits, the dead people, the entities, the demons, who's ever there. Um, because I've seen in other ghost shows where they wander around locations and they're like, are you here? Was that you? <laughs> now, now, think about it, okay? You're stuck in a location for 100 years with people ignoring you. And now people come in, a group of five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people, and this guy walks in and goes, hey, are you in here? The ghost thinks you're talking to his your buddy or the other investigator. He doesn't think you're talking to him. Why would he think he was talking to you? He's been ignored for 100 years. Okay? So I come in and I say, hey, listen, dead people, ghosts, entities, whatever you're here, we're here to talk to you. So-and-so called us in to find out who you are, what you want. 
And that way our intentions are known. We're not here to hurt you unless you're a bully demonic entity, then we are here to hurt you. But overall, that's not the case. And we want you to communicate. Here's what we brought to talk to you. We brought gifts. I just say we're bringing, we brought gifts. <laughs> I brought gifts. Okay, great. You're going to get to talk for the first time in 100 years. You'll hear your own voice. Okay. So that's how we open. But just as important as closing the door. Mm -hmm. When we leave, I say this door to the spirit realm is closed. All communication is ended. All the equipment gets shut off. And then we pray ourselves out and ask God for protection. You see, you are not allowed to follow yeah. us. You're not allowed to attach yourselves to us in any way. Yeah. I haven't looked at my rearview mirror once. No. So <laughs> and and Russ and I have been doing this almost five years. Um, Brandon's been doing this for a couple of years with mm -hmm. us. We've never had a problem. Okay. Because he was right. Same thing with the Ouija board. I don't use Ouija boards because I find it's hard to, to prove that as evidence on camera personally. Okay. Um, but if you're using a Ouija board, you have to close it out and say goodbye, or you're leaving a portal open in your house. You're leaving a door open, and anything can walk in, and it might not be what you want to walk in. So just just, just a tip to anyone. Again, if you're going to do these things, even if you're just going to mess around, do it the right way. A uh, spirit box is the same thing as a Ouija board. is the same thing as a flashlight. is the same thing as an EMF detector, but you've got to end it at the end, or you're asking for trouble. They will follow you. Now, uh, again, if anybody knows someone who needs help with a haunting, paranormal activity, whether you want validation, whether you want us to come and validate and cleanse, whatever you need for help, we are here for you. Okay? We don't charge a penny. We don't judge. We don't charge. We just what? Help. 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 That's what we do. We help. Too, so. Okay? If you don't want to be on camera, you don't have to be. If you don't want us to announce the location, you don't have to have it announced. We normally don't anyway. Okay, so please, our email is at the bottom of the screen. Email us. Uh, we do have a website as well, which is relatively paranormal, re relatively paranormal dot site dot com backslash relatively paranormal, and we do have a YouTube channel called Relatively Paranormal, and we also have a Facebook group that you can contact us through called Relatively Paranormal. It's easy, Relatively Paranormal all the way around. We're here yeah. to help. If there's a haunted <laughs> location locally that you know about that you would like us to investigate, please let us know. Mm -hmm. I don't know every haunted location around here. You know, I know Fort Tabor. I know the Armory. I know a few other places. Um, we've been to a lot of places, but please give us tips like Deb Bowen did, like the, the guest tonight. Uh, we're going to the, the haunted house house tomorrow because of Deb's tip. Mm -hmm. Please, we'll take all the tips we can help that we can get. And, or uh, if you're interested in coming along for one of our well, investigations. You can inquire. I mean, we are uh, looking for another person. I mean, you can inquire. Um, we keep it small for a reason. But, you know, if you're interested, let us know. If you have questions about the paranormal, let us know. We're here to help. Other than that, thank you so much for joining us, Marissa. Oh, thank you. Brandon. Nice to meet you guys. We'll see you again next Friday, 6 p.m. Have a great weekend. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope everybody tunes in tomorrow night at 8 o'clock for the